Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, take a look at the calm conditions out there tonight on the uh, satellite and radar picture. All is looking good. A few clouds did move in late today. More cloud cover rolling in here from the west, but very mild. Temperatures tonight are not going to fall off a whole lot. 45 in Champaign. It is still 52 in Effingham and in Springfield. That's looking great. And tomorrow looks to be very nice as well. As we start out in the 40s, we're up to 57 degrees by 11 a.m. But it's going to get really, really windy out there. As always, we encourage you to download the WCI3 weather app. You can have it right there. You can scroll down, click on the hour by hour and get all the information you need. We'll be talking about how these temperatures continue to warm and when this radar is going to be full of rain. That's coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA3 News. The gifted program in one school district was meant to help students. Why some are worried it's leaving others behind. Plus, take a look. This man is accused of puncturing the tires in more than 100 cars last week. The charges he's now facing for it. And you've had the vaccine. Now what's next? What the new CDC guidelines mean for you. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. It's extremely scary. I mean, my husband and I have had conversations over the weekend of, do we move out of the district? Future of the gifted program at Champaign schools could be up in the air. That is at least one parent reconsidering her options. Good evening, I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jessica Coons. School board members are considering the removal of the elementary gifted program. Some say that program is not diverse enough. WCI3's Bryce Beamant joins us live from the newsroom. So Bryce, the board just heard reports about this tonight. Nothing is set in stone. Yes, that's all they are right now, but this discussion is the first step to moving forward in the future. My first grader now yeah. reads chapter books at home, and in the classroom he's learning two-letter words. Champaign School Board held a meeting discussing the gradual removal of the gifted program. This is for students from second to fifth grades. The district wants equity in the program. 72% in the program are white or Asian, while 10% are black or Hispanic. It's really hard to support a program when we all we do is support the academic piece, which we do it off of the Nagley area, which we know is biased. Some board members think the gifted program is allowing certain races better education. What we've done is inherently created private schools within our public school. That is correct. And that's not fair. But for some parents, the gifted program is a way to get great education that they say compares to private school. What this decision would mean for so many people who you know, may not be able to afford private school. One parent argues that getting rid of the gifted program would worsen her kids' education because they're academically ahead of what they are learning in the classroom. To see some sort of detailed plan for how the needs of those academically higher performing students would be addressed in the absence of that program. But as board member Dr. Giannina Baker argues, the program is giving special treatment to kids of a certain race. There's Clearly a lack of diversity, always has been, always will be in the way that we have established it. You don't need my vote, but if you did, the answer is yes. The gifted program lost state funding a few years back, so the program is being funded locally as well. They will speak about it again in the future. In the newsroom, I'm Bryce Beamant, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Bryce, thank you. The school board also discussed school resource officers tonight. The plan is to renew SRO contracts, but they also want to add student support advocates. They would undergo training to help kids in school, and they also want students and families to be comfortable and actually know the SRO officers at different schools. The Black Caucus celebrated another win today as Governor Pritzker signed their education reform bill into law. Black lawmakers said it would, quote, end centuries of systemic racism in our public education system. They highlighted how the pressures of the pandemic took a toll on students' emotional and mental health, especially minority students who suffer trauma, poverty, or housing insecurity. The new law reforms black history curriculum and expands funding and recruitment tools to help teachers of color get jobs in the classroom. Every statistic, every metric, every measure that's compiled, counted, analyzed, and audited tells you 
as a black mother that your baby has a small chance of ever becoming a successful adult simply because they were born black in a system built to ensure their failure. The new law also requires high school students take a year course with intensive computer literacy. It automatically enrolls students in advanced placement or AP courses and requires high schools to make sure students have all the coursework they need to get accepted to college. Also out of the Capitol tonight, state lawmakers are responding to a Target 3 investigation. We showed you evidence in the fall of methane leaking from an underground natural gas storage field in LaSalle County. Now lawmakers overwhelmingly approved a measure to crack down on those leaking gas fields. As the bill stands, it would require the state to verify the source of the leak. If they can test it and trace it back to the storage field, the company would be responsible for a slew of things, including paying for gas detector installation and devices to separate gas from water. One lawmaker says the current system has allowed for this problem to go unnoticed for some time. There's clearly a number of cracks in the system where people are falling through the cracks and these, these big multinational, multi-billion dollar companies are polluting the area, uh, whether it's the air or the water. And we need to make sure people are safe and we're holding them accountable so that this kind of pollution stops. The head of government relations for NICOR testified in the committee. She's a former House Democrat now on contract with the gas company. She said NICOR stepped up and did as it should have. For more details about this investigation, check out WCIA.com. Fire destroyed a house in Danville tonight near Gilbert Street and Fairchild Street. Firefighters say this home was vacant. No word on if anyone was hurt or what started those flames. A man who was hurt in a shooting less than two weeks ago was the victim of another shooting this afternoon. It happened near Ash and Glenwood in Springfield. Witnesses told police they saw two cars on the road when the shots were fired. The victim was shot in the hand and taken to the hospital. State police say a man who was shot by an officer in Chatham last week is still in the hospital. This happened on East Walnut near Ben's Drive. State police say Officer Adam Hahn was responding to a man with a knife. Police say that man was trying to cut his own neck. They say he ran toward Officer Han with the knife when the officer tried to address him, and that's when Han shot him. Jury selection set to start tomorrow for this man right here. He is Jonathan Perry, and he's accused of killing two women last year. His girlfriend, 54-year-old Kimberly Coyne, and her daughter, 24-year-old Blair Coyne, were both found dead in their home in St. Joseph last March. Police say he shot them. Perry would face up to life in prison if he's convicted. Take a look here in court, Dallas Bone. He's accused of puncturing tires on more than 100 cars in Urbana last week. He's charged with seven counts of destruction of property. Dozens of people woke up last Monday to find flat tires on their cars. Bone was caught on surveillance video, police say. We've reached out to the state's attorney to ask why they've decided to only charge Bone with seven counts. We have not heard back. Three people, including a two-year-old, were sent to the hospital after a car crash in Champaign County today. Happened at the intersection of South Barker and West Old Church Roads. Police say a man in a pickup truck with the child inside blew a stop sign and hit a woman in another car. That man and the child are expected to be okay. The woman was airlifted with several broken bones. Switching now to the latest on coronavirus, another five people have died in Illinois. There are more than 1,100 new cases. The positivity rate is currently at 2.8%. The number of ICU beds in Region 6, the area in yellow, has dropped below 50%. It's currently at 49%. That's the lowest in the state. Region 3, the area in red, is at 68%. As for vaccination rates, Illinois is averaging more than 90,000 doses over the last seven days. Just over 9% of the state's population is now fully vaccinated. That leaves more than 11.5 million people who still need to get both shots. There are new guidelines for people who have gotten the COVID vaccine. The CDC says fully vaccinated people can hang out indoors with other fully vaccinated people without distancing or masks. They can also visit inside with people who are unvaccinated if those people are from the same household. Public health leaders say when the vaccine first came out, guidelines were based on clinical trials, but these updated guidelines are a sign the vaccine is working. I'm actually very happy uh, to see the recommendations that have come out from the CDC, which really, you know, talks about the confidence of the CDC in the vaccine. 
A person is considered fully vaccinated two weeks after receiving the last required dose. We have a link to all of the updated guidelines on our website. A marijuana dispensary is coming to the U of I campus right next to Cam's in Campus Town. It'll be at First and Green in Champaign. New Era already operates in Urbana. Owners say they're excited about the opportunities expansion will provide. They say everyone wins because not only will Champaign have a new source of tax revenue, but also because they have more room to free up space for medical customers in both areas. It's just been a firestorm, you know. Uh, more and more people are coming, and um, as we get more and more product, we're able to help out more and more people. In a statement, however, university leaders say you can't smoke on campus property, and anyone who's caught doing so is subject to university discipline. Illinois basketball has sights set on winning championships, and the team will have a high ranking to start off with. I have to assume who's already a star for the Illini. Why so? I'm calling him a superhero. Kevin, today may be our best day of the week, but yeah. tomorrow looks good, too. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, temperature's back uh, up near 70 again, but it's going to get really windy, and we get a lot of rain in the forecast here late in the week. Here's a recap of today. Look at those numbers. Wow. Eight degrees from a record there. When we come back, winds, the rain, and how long these warm temperatures are going to stick around. That's coming up.